somewhere between the shores of France and England. This critical battlefield is the stage for a clash of enemy fleets. This idyllic setting will soon be shattered by the thunder of guns and flash of explosions, as only one fleet can be victorious. This is Sea of Fortune. Sea of Fortune is a 48 by 48 kilometer domination style map with three cap points running a line from west to east. The A cap is on the left, B is in the center, and C is on the right. The A cap is surrounded by islands, but offers virtually no cover from within the cap itself. Those islands provide plenty of places for radar cruisers to conceal themselves, making aggressive destroyer plays for the cap early in a game frequently suicidal. A narrow passage links cap A and cap B in the center. There are only four ways in and out of the B cap, one in each cardinal direction, and no cover inside. Cap C is possibly the easiest cap for destroyers to contest, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. Wide open to the north and south with a connecting passage to B cap in the west, ships caught in C by enemy radar have nowhere to hide. 18 ships, 2 teams, 1 victor, it's time to play Sea of Fortune. And we can see the lineup now. Interestingly enough, Somers, Yu Yang. First time that we have seen a Yu Yang today. We can see both teams already moving in as the game gets underway here. The Somers and the Gearing of Lobos moving Torps as we can start to see the lineups. Yamato Kremlin, two Des Moines, two Smolens get a Stalingrad against the Gearing Somers. I'm going to print out that I didn't mute myself the first time that I went through the lineups. So, as we can see now, relatively quiet initial spotting. The only things that have happened so far are some destroyers spewing torps throughout the A and C caps. B, as tradition, as is tradition, has been left rather uncontested. The QCN Stalingrad is pushed up very far, in fact, ahead of this island. Really no place to escape here, as he is starting to get worked on by a Smolensk. And soon enough, a Des Moines is likely to join the party. He is the only ship spotted for Lobos to work on right now, so he will be taking plenty of fire. Switching over to the other view, we can see that only a Kremlin and Yamato, both battleships spotted as all the torps run through the caps and don't find any mark. But we can see that Fox's Yu Yang has lost 10k, so I lied when I said that the torps didn't find their mark because clearly... One Torp from a Gearing certainly did. We can see that the Gearing is starting to work into the A cap. Reversing far enough, he is going to spot the Yu Yang. With the Yu Yang taking a Torp, this could be the end of the Yu Yang very early on. Down to just 4k. He's got no way to escape. If you're bringing a Yu Yang, it's for radar. No way to disengage. Down to 3k. QCN is going to lose a Yu Yang very early on. Under 4 minutes in. Losing one half of their destroyer force already due to a big mistake eating a torp early and getting caught on the wrong side of an island that's why islands are only your friends if they're in front of you with no way to escape the yu yang had nowhere to run nowhere to hide and was gunned down in short order by the enemy team we can see now that QCN has gotten the C cap. At least they have something this early in the game. 
which are going to start very slowly ticking up points. But I'm sure if you ask, they would much rather have their Yu Yang back as their A flank now turns into a kiting flank with the Venezia, Borgon, and Stalingrad ready to stand their ground or run if need be. Yamato pops up for them. On the other side, we can see that the Somers has actually been spotted. That would be by Stalingrad radar, but nothing much really going in on him yet. We can see the Smolensk is starting to open up, but it is just as the radar of the Stalingrad goes down. And we can see now the Zhao popping up, and we understand why the Somers didn't want to fire his guns there. Very, very risky as he sends in those torps on the Zhao. DM of Lobos has pushed up very far, and he's now in a gunfight with the Venezia. But the Venezia, he's rather well angled, and the Borgon can't overmatch him. So the Des Moines isn't in a terribly risky position here as QCN's other cruisers do start to get chunked down in return. We could see that the Kremlin is pushing into A with the Gearing and Smolensk ahead of the Des Moines now. They're going to start working down that Borgone who was just taking a torpedo, forced to use his damage control, and he needs to start running away very, very quickly or who's going to be in big trouble as the Kremlin gets into the A cap. Why cap with the destroyer when you can cap with the Kremlin? We can see now all the ships on both teams mostly starting to focus on the battleships. The Borgona smooth operator is getting focused on by the two cruisers as the rabbit gets chunked down. We can see a destroyer fight up above the sea cap as the Somers has strayed too far and is spotted by the enemy Somers. They do slap the Zhao for it, but he's been working on the Somers as well, and he's down to just over half health. Lots of blue tracer shells coming in on the Somers as he is forced to burn a smoke screen, cutting off vision, but unlike the Borgon, the Somers of Lobos is not going to go down, but the Borgon of QCN does. So very early on, QCN has lost two ships on their A flank, Forcing them into a push, into a position where they're going to get pushed off very easily. The Bowen Stalingrad and the Venezia are going to be in a lot of trouble here as the Kremlin does manage to cap A. We can see now that QCN is starting to move their DM into the B cap. As they are starting to get a little bit desperate here. Shots from the DM. You gotta remember Des Moines got those improved AP angles. This Des Moines is not angled enough. He's starting to get chunked down. He's already lost half his health. He's going to get shot by the Venezia now. He's down to just 20k. 30k health gone just like that. As he's sort of forced at this point to move into the B cap. Or else the Venezia is going to keep working him down. And the Des Moines is going to shred his guns. The Kremlin has actually gotten unspotted. But we can see here that the Des Moines is caught very well. And it is only a matter of time before his guns start getting incapacitated and then destroyed. That's what wins you a Bawan fight in a Des Moines. Who breaks the guns first? If you get a gun broken, you are probably in deep trouble. And we can see now with only one turret firing, this Des Moines has a broken gun. Let's see if it gets permanently destroyed, giving him a massive kneecap for the rest of the game. Oh, shells coming in, AP shells. He might not have to worry about losing a turret. He might have to worry about losing his ship. And there he goes. Made a huge mistake, not angling enough, and it cost him his ship. As we can see, the Somers of Captain Deadpool is moving in far too close to that Stalingrad. Gets himself spotted. And we can see now that it was only momentary, and the Stalingrad has elected not to use his radar as they push very strong up onto that flank. We can see now that QCN did not manage to take the B cap, but... They are starting to work on the... Ooh, Stalingrad is far... He's off the island. He made a big mistake there. He's going to lose his health very, very quickly as they try to work down the Des Moines of Lobos. I don't think they're going to get that Des Moines before they can clap the Stalingrad down. But the Des Moines is moving in broadside to the Venezia. And then the AP from the Smolensk is coming in as well as the DM. So he needs to be very careful. This is a very poor idea to rush in here because he is going to lose his ship for this. All he had to do was stay on the island and use his HE to farm down the Stalingrad. It looks like he's going to take what could have been an easy win and turn it into an unfortunate trade for Lobos as both cruisers do go down. But that's a very good trade. 
for QCN. Although at this point, it's not a good scenario for them. They are up on points, but they are down one ship. And they need to be very careful here as their C cap is in much more danger than the A cap of Lobos. The gearing sends Torps through B. If the Smolensk or the Des Moines try to take another poke at it, the Smolensk is spotted, but we can see the Kremlin has just lost a lot of health as he starts to move through and take a lot of Torps broadside from the Stalingrad as well. He is in a lot of trouble as the Kremlin also has great angles on him through the middle. He gets lucky to not get instantly deleted, but it's another huge chunk of his health gone as the Kremlin of the Rabbit can just push straight into the B cap. Who's going to stop him? Not the Yu Yang. He's gone. Not the Somers. They know he's gone as well. Because he was last spotted at the sea cap. One last salvo from the Kremlin. Will it be enough to secure the kill? It won't. Gets very, very fortunate there. But shots coming in from the Stalingrad. Drop him down to just 400 health. That's going to be enough. As the ill-advised push of the Kremlin... Results in his unsurprising demise. And Lobos appears to be taking the B cap as the Des Moines is completely focused on the Smolensk pushing through. The Venezia has given too much ground. Instead of looping around to an area where he could be able to get broadsides on the Smolensk and possibly put himself into a position to push up into A, he has given ground, gone back to the middle, and given up any chance of a good position on that side. A blind torp from the gearing does actually catch the Somers, so that is the last destroyer of QCN down, as QCN is now in a lot of trouble. Only, they're down 200 points, they're down plenty of ships, the Des Moines gets slapped by the Kremlin, unable to get off the island in time. The radar goes up, but it won't be enough. The Des Moines goes down as well, very, very quickly, and Lobos is now in a commanding position here. Only 44,000 health left on the board as the Zhao gets slapped down as well. The broadsides being given to the Russian lineup of Lobos were just too much. The Smolensk's whittling down ships. The Stalingrad's punishing any lack of angling as Lobos takes a commanding lead this late in the game. Their only ships remaining are in smoke, waiting as the Lobo ships start to bear down. They don't have to do anything at this point, but <laughs> they know it's over. When you see Yamato shoot his own destroyer, that's pretty much that's pretty much your sign that the game is done. QCN though, still intending to fight it out to the bitter end. Smolensk does get spotted, and that's going to be just about it for him. Salvo from the Kremlin comes in. Other shells coming in. The whole team focused on working him down. We can just see the amounts of AP coming in towards this Smolensk. Just starting to absolutely shred him. They may get the gearing for it. They do. But at this point, it is not going to matter. Just the Venezia versus all with his 21,000 health. Versus the Kremlin at point blank range. A Yamato, a Smolensk, a Somers, and a Stalingrad. Even if the Venezia somehow manages to get away, he's got 200 health. 200,000 health in order to work through this game is a decisive victory for lobos as they move to three and two and hope to advance into the group stages qcn goes two and three in this swiss qualifier as the venezia angles himself to try and make something some sort of miracle happen but as he takes another shot from the yamato it looks pretty clear down to just 200 health that this game is going to go in the favor of Lobos. They took a quick lead with the kill on the Yu Yang. A very fortunate salvo in any other circumstance for the Venezia, but it's not going to matter now as they just wait for him to take that one last hit. And there it is. Lobos takes the game over the Quebec Navy and moves to three and two in the Swiss stage. A very impressive showing by them, starting off very, very strong with the kill on the Yu Yang and never really slowing down as QCN was on their back foot the whole time.